Thanks to our earlier trip out west, we were able to source some new ingredients, as well as enlist the help of Grant and Cody to produce some of the clearest glass I've made yet. Over planning and coordinating a trip like this is a huge challenge, where often things can go wrong. So we set up our trip with some backups, in case some of the ingredients failed or Grant's forge wasn't hot enough. Now knowing that Grant's forge was actually very effective, I'm gonna follow through and build my own and test it on our batch of backup glass that had ran into its own issues along the way. But first, this episode of How to Make Everything is sponsored by LastPass. While planning and executing trips like ours can be a huge messy challenge, one tool that can help coordinate counts between a small team like ours is LastPass. LastPass is a comprehensive password manager which will take the headache out of remembering all of your passwords you use every day. With LastPass, you don't have to write, remember, or reset passwords. They keep track of it so you can stay sane. LastPass relieves the trouble of looking for passwords and anxiety around getting locked out of accounts. LastPass can generate impenetrable passwords unique to each login you use. And you don't have to worry about remembering your grandma's maiden name or your high school mascot, because LastPass has all of your passwords securely stored. You can also share LastPass amongst a team with LastPass Premium. LastPass Premium works great for us because oftentimes we're in different locations but need access to the same accounts and logins. While Chris and I are traveling, we don't have to worry if Brian needs to change our logins from back home. We have the latest login information right at our fingertips. LastPass works both on desktop and mobile devices, and you can even set it to autofill your login pages for you. Check it out at lastpass.com. They have both free and paid options, so find the plan that's right for you. Put your passwords on autopilot with LastPass. One of the key ingredients we traveled out west for was soda ash to act as a flux for the glass we were going to make. It is disgusting here. It's probably the high concentration of the chemicals. With the natron collected, I strain out all the bug larvae and other particles and then boil it down to just the salts. However, the source we collect in Wyoming was mixed with other compounds and I wasn't sure we'd be able to separate them. So we collected from another possible source in Utah. What we have here is a glass warp plant and it's a salt loving plant. So we find it here in the salt plains and when you burn it, it produces soda ash, which we'll then use for making glass. This is a similar species to the one that Louis Darnell used when he made glass. So I'm hoping by using this source, I'll be able to get a similar success to the one that he had. I carefully collected only a few branches from each bush and spread out my collection across many plants so it wouldn't cause any significant damage to the desert ecosystem. I'm sure stuff in the deserts is rare to grow. And the plant is also supposedly edible, so let's try some. Very salty. Tastes like, kind of like a salty pickle. Might be why it's called pickle weed. Um, yeah, very salty. To extract the soda ash from it, I'll need to burn the plant and collect the ashes, which is where the origin of this compound's name actually comes from. That's good. We tried it a couple different times at various points on the trip. The desert plant was surprisingly moist and difficult to burn. <laughs> oh, perfect timing. Let's get out of here. <laughs> After finally being able to collect the ashes, soak them in water, and then evaporate the solution. One of the biggest variables on this trip was even if Grant's Forge was going to be hot enough, something that's been a limiting factor in some of my other attempts. In case the attempt with him failed, we contacted a glass in Utah to use their kiln for a backup batch. There we put together a batch of some of my original sand, the soda ash extracted from glass wart, a little bit of the natron, as well as just a little bit of salt from the Redmond salt mine. Before the collaborations, we left that batch in the kiln for over a day to slowly bake and hopefully produce some clear glass. Unfortunately, that night the glass water got freaked out by a large amount of steam the batch was emitting and pulled our batch out prematurely. Lucky for us, the glass made with Grant actually turned out quite well. But I want to keep refining my skills and see if we can salvage the backup batch of glass and finish melting it into something. 
Now we know the effectiveness of Grant's Forge, on top of the continual issues we keep running into with trying to get access to a kiln that's hot enough, I thought I'd replicate Grant's plans and build my own. In front of me here I have all the pieces to first make the propane torches and then next I'll be making the actual forge itself. You can find the link in the description for Grant's actual videos where he goes through in full details. So I'm basically following his plans and I make a few modifications to the forge because I accidentally ordered the wrong size. So as you can see, a little bit bigger than was probably necessary, but they give us more room. So what I'm gonna try and do is use some of the leftover refractory brick and line the inside of it so it's even more insulated. Got a few packs of KO wool used to line it. I think that worked pretty good. Just gotta put it all together, light her up. All right, so let's assess what happened. Didn't really make glass, we made something that looks a little bit more like poop taffy. I suspect a big part of that was the galvanized torch tips. In haste, I accidentally got galvanized and that caused a chemical reaction that I believe caused a lot of this yellow and that potentially colored the glass. So I'm suspecting that's the main culprit for the color. There are other contributing factors, such as it's a secondary attempt. And now we're trying to reheat and then remelt. This is also not purified by Cody, so there's some extra elements in there. So our next batch should hopefully be cleaner. I took some temperatures of it at various spots. And near the burner, it was over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But towards the top, I was getting around 14, 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. That shows that we could do some improvements on the insulation. The refractory bricks we have in there now is a good start. So my main objective at this point was to just get out all the glass so we could reuse the crucible. Of course, once, once I took out all the glass, I realized the crucible itself cracked, probably because we heated it too quickly. So that might not even be usable. And might have just wasted some money there. So I think we learned some important things here that are gonna really help us in the next attempt. We wasted some of the material that was kind of already wasted because it got taken out of the kiln before. But fortunately, we collected a bunch of stuff in Utah so we can do a few more attempts and uh, hopefully nail it next time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.